guys doing? I hope you're all well. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about trauma-informed care. I think with um, further research into trauma, trauma-informed care is becoming more popular. People are starting to recognize their importance of it and it's just really valuable if you hold a degree in social work to have an understanding or at least know of trauma-informed care so you can request for further training on it if need be. Um, so yeah, I do have a video that I filmed about a year ago on what trauma is and what it looks like. That was very basic. It was just a really basic overview of what trauma looks like. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave it in the description box below and I'll also leave it in the info cards up on the screen somewhere so you can check that out and then watch this after so yeah I'm not going to talk too much about that um, if you're new to my channel welcome my name is Jasmine I'm a practicing social worker and I share my experiences here on the channel both social work and non-social work related go ahead and subscribe show some support I'm sure you find um, a lot of the videos on here beneficial for you anyways let's get right into the video so what is trauma-informed care? So trauma-informed care is grounded in an, an understanding of trauma and its impact and being responsive to that awareness that you have. Um, trauma-informed care also takes into consideration the physical, the emotional, and the mental well-being of both clients and the staff that may be working with the clients. Trauma-informed care also uh, is grounded in supporting survivors of different kinds of trauma to gain some kind of control of their lives and feel start to feel empowered in, in one way or the other. Now, there are five principles that trauma-informed care goes by. Um, the first one is safety. Now, safety covers for physical safety, emotional safety, um, cultural safety, basically anything that will contribute to a client being comfortable and open. So not just for clients, but for staff as well. Safety is such an important thing because for people that have experienced trauma, a lot of the times those traumatic events haven't happened in safe environments. So trying to assess and being aware of what makes the client comfortable is really important in order to get them to start to open up and to start f to feel comfortable with you as a worker. Um, how you establish safety is, you know, sometimes you just got to ask like, you know, are you comfortable? Are you okay? And sometimes you can just observe, you know, sometimes they might start to feel anxious or be shaky or they might have certain behaviors that might, that might indicate that they're not feeling comfortable. Um, and sometimes as well, so for instance, I have worked obviously in domestic violence for the past three and a half years. And um, in one of the rooms where we do the intake assessments and stuff like that, we have um, an Aboriginal painting on the wall and sometimes when we've had Aboriginal clients they found that a little bit uncomfortable or confronting so every time that a client may be Aboriginal I might bring it up and just ask you know are they all right do they want us to go into a different room you know just and just touching base with them just see if they're okay giving them them that option um, gives them a sense of control and it also gives them um, allows them to start to trust you as a service which ties into the next principle so trust is the next principle trust is really important it's very important to be clear on what you can and can't do for the client um, it's very important to be clear on what your expectations are of them and then they can make it clear what their expectations are of you and this really helps with boundaries and a lot of the time this is really important because a lot of the time people that have been through trauma have had their trust breached in one way or the other um, especially where I work in domestic violence you know trust um, has been broken so many times so the last thing you want is to re-traumatize them by not being a hundred percent thorough and honest and that really helps with setting boundaries and stuff as well so they know it's the what client worker relationship is very clear and they know not to overstep the boundaries and they know what they can ask of you and what they can't ask of you um the next principle that i'm going to talk about is collaboration so in working with trauma 
um, I, I think there's so many factors that needs to be looked at and your service might not be able to cover it all so it's important to work collaboratively with other services that might be able to support your client and the collaborative process involves the client as well in the process you know around decision making around what they want um, and what what suits them and what can help the journey um, in healing for, from the trauma and that ties into the next point which is empowerment so uh, using a trauma informed care approach is strength based so you tap into the strengths of the client you validate them you build on them and you support them to continue to use those strengths in their own life and that can be a part of the collaboration process and the final principle that I would mention is choice so allowing the client to be able to make their own decisions around what's better suited to them for their healing is really important because it obviously empowers them it acknowledges their own integrity as an individual and how valuable they are and um, it's all part of the collaborative process of working with them as well so those are the five principles of trauma-informed care now finally I want to talk about the importance of incorporating trauma-informed care into your work or at least being aware of it or being open to studying or learning about it um, first of all, as a social worker, a lot of the time you're working with people that have experienced all forms of adversity. So it's almost inevitable that you, you will work with a client that has experienced some kind of trauma in their life. So I think that makes it really vital that you study trauma informed care or at least be aware of it. Another thing that I would mention is, um, it really helps you to have a better understanding when people present with different things like rape or um, even like other issues like maybe substance abuse and things like that because you're aware of the impact of trauma and maybe because of because you're aware that certain things that may have happened to them in the in their childhood may be contributing to why they're the way they are now you're less judgmental and you're able to empathize with them and that empathy doesn't come from a place of just emotion it comes from a place of this is there's book knowledge there's evidence that if someone was raped as a child this is what they're like as an adult and therefore i need to be a bit more understanding in the way that i support them and you know when you work that way judgments like oh how come she's she hasn't left her relationship and she's still with this abusive guy is not likely to happen because you have an understanding of the whole story you have an understanding of where she's come from and how her idea of safety might not be as clear as it could be and that's why she might be still in this relationship same way if someone presents with substance abuse you will be able to work with them better because you would have an understanding that they're only abusing substances because it's a coping mechanism say for instance um for something they experienced as a child or something they've recently experienced so it allows you to empathize better with clients and when you have a better understanding of what they might be going through then you can definitely obviously work with them as well the final reason that I think it's so important to be aware or at least be open to studying trauma-informed care is it allows you to not re-traumatize clients as well, you know, because if you're not aware of, say, these five principles and you see a client who may have been through trauma um, without being, um, I guess, cautious or aware, it's very easy to re-traumatize them because something that you might think it's not a big deal might have a big impact on them than you may think so for instance the example that i gave where some people can be culturally um affected when they see the aboriginal paintings in the office that i usually do intake assessments to me it's just a painting like it doesn't mean anything and i think it's just whatever but to them it's it's an important part of the culture and it might remind them of certain things that may have happened in the past and things like that so if I'm aware um, and I'm practicing from a trauma-informed care um, lens, I'm able to touch base or at least be aware of the client's behaviors and things and I'm able to pinpoint and um, ask the right questions just so I know that I'm creating a safe space and I'm allowing them to be comfortable enough to start to open up 
um, to me because if I kind of ignore that and I just think everything is okay then the chances that I'm going to be able to support the client is almost zero to none because within the first contact there were, there's no trust there she's not comfortable because there's this painting that's already re-traumatizing her and I'm not aware enough to ask those questions to find out if she's okay or not that basically sums it up i hope this video has been helpful if it has make sure you give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment below what do you know about trauma informed care is this something that's being shared in uni now because when i went to uni um it wasn't even a topic that we spoke about i've only kind of started to study it now that i've been practicing social work for a few years so yeah what's what's it like in uni now like do you guys study it or is it more part of the masters um side of things i would love to know so let me know in the comment section below thank you very much for watching guys i will see you in my next video take care bye bye